So we're wrapping up today's segment with a, a new feature we promised you last week. We're going to try to do it every single day, or at least a couple times a week, but, but as much as we can. It's called Instant Classic, where we look at some aspect of culture, something uplifting, right? None of this snowflake garbage. Some of the great achievements of the past in terms of art, culture, literature, something uplifting, and something that's going to help moms and dads who have kids at home, kids who are not getting miseducated in the public school. Maybe they can listen to instant classics and get a little bit of education while they're home with their parents. I know moms and dads are, uh, have, we've gotten all kinds of emails from moms and dads saying, hey, keep doing this kind of stuff. Give us real education so that we can counterbalance not what's going on in the, cl- the shuttered public schools, but how we can help educate our kids at home. So we're going to begin our first installment of instant classic today. Today's instant classic is Michelangelo Marisi de Caravaggio, who is an Italian painter in the late 16th century. Now, he painted most of the time in Rome, and he's known for portraying the human condition realistically and using contrast with shadows and light. Uh, He painted basically in what became the emerging Baroque style, and he died in 1610 at the age, they say, of either 36 or 38, depending on where you look. Yeah, Caravaggio is one of those figures in Western art and world culture, actually, who, tra- who changes everything. Uh, he was a contemporary of Shakespeare, if that helps you get a sense of when he lived. Six- Shakespeare died in 1616. By 1610, Caravaggio had died. And in, in his own way, Carav- Caravaggio absolutely transformed the science of painting, the art of painting, into something that we had never seen before. Take a look at the image. This is The Calling of St. Matthew by Caravaggio. And notice first the use of light and dark, right? Nobody did this. Uh, other, uh, other artists had, 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 had messed with it a little bit, had played with it a little bit. Da Vinci had ch- charoscuro, right? This idea of, of, of contrasting lights and darks and whites and blacks. But nobody did it like Caravaggio. There you have, on the right, Christ. He's the one pointing. And you only see him over the shoulder of St. Peter. Jesus has, I love the way Caravaggio has taken the story of the calling of St. Matthew. Matthew, of course, would write one of the four gospels. Matthew is, of course, one of the most important apostles. And what I love about this is he's taken that scene and he's modernized it. It's not taking place in robes and togas in the Roman Empire. It's taking place in the 16th century where Caravaggio lived, taking the, the immediacy of the Gospels and making them relevant to his audience. And there's Jesus pointing with his right hand over. He, you see him over uh, behind P, St. Peter who's looking away, and he's pointing to St. Matthew. And you see the man with the hat there. These, they're all, Matthew was a, a tax collector, right? And there's Matthew in black with the big beard pointing to himself right? Me? Me? Am I being called away from money? And on the table, you've got all this money and all this wealth, all this uh, tax money that had been extor- was being extorted by the Roman Empire as they oppressed the Jews. You have Matthew in the midst of all of this money. And remember, w- remember what it would have been to be a Jewish tax collector on the behalf of the Roman Empire, right? How that was a horrible thing to have, to, uh, a betrayal of Jewish culture, right? And so there you have the picture of Matthew pointing at himself. And what I love about this is the light and the dark. It's as if the, the, this, this, this whole scene takes place in a basement, in, in some, time, some kind of a tavern basement, right? A seedy place with all kinds of loose characters. You can see the light that comes in from the upper right-hand corner. Obviously, Christ and Peter have opened a door into this dark world. And notice how this wonderful shaft of light comes down the staircase to illuminate exactly Matthew, right? The seedy, dark underworld. Now tell me that's not uh, on top of whatever else it is, a commentary on Matthew's profession about the light that Matthew would find in Christ. But look at the beauty of that, right? What a, what, a, what a commentary on Christ's whole missionary to bring light to the darkness. Right? Think of the opening of the Gospel of John, right? Uh, how the Word was at the beginning. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He brings light into the darkness there. That seedy underground world of tax collecting, of gambling, of prostitution. Christ calls a light on it. He opens the door. Into the, into the darkness comes the light. Christ's hand is extended. You, right? In fact, if you have a, if you, we could show you in better resolution this picture, you would see that uh, Christ's feet were already turning as if he's not going to stand and wait, that Christ is going to, he's pointed to the man he wants, he's about to reascend the stairs and go, and as we know from history, Matthew is called. He leaves his counting, he leaves his tax money behind, he follows Jesus, and would end up being a martyr for Christianity. 
And for those of us who know a different Michelangelo, we're aware of what happens on the Sistine Chapel. And if you take a look at Jesus's hand, it's basically a reminder of the creation of Adam and the hand of Adam's hand reaching out to God's or God's reaching out to Adam. So it is very connected in that sense for people who didn't know this Michelangelo. That's a wonderful comparison between the, the Michelangelo, right? And go back to the picture one more time. That would be the hand of God. Christ is the son of God. And then where would the hand of Adam be in Michelangelo's peer, f- f- picture? It would be reaching out to touch the hand of God. But here, the still selfish Matthew, the Matthew who still does not know God, right? Instead of reaching out to the touch of the Savior, he is pointing to himself. It's that kind of selfishness that Michelangelo da Marisi Caravaggio is going to turn around. And as you look very close in that picture, you can also see that while he does have his left hand going, oh, is it me? On his right, he, he's still clutching onto that money because, yes, right. again, he is a tax collector. So it's, it's that very, am I going to live for the material here and now? Or do I turn that finger to Christ and follow him? This is what's called an epiphany, right? It's the moment the light, a bolt of light hits you and you recognize that everything you've done in your life to this point has been a lie. That when you are confronted with the truth, that bolt of light, it reminds me of the moment when Saul of Tarsus is knocked off his horse, right? Another painting that Caravaggio did fantastically well, and maybe we'll see down the road. 